The dawn of civilization. Primitive. Dangerous. Exciting. The handwriting is on the wall. If the human race is ever going to amount to anything, it needs... The most civilized caveman I have ever seen. Ah, oh, look who's come out of his cave. Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in. This is James from Cave Dweller Music Podcast. I have my co-host Brendan with me today. And we are joined by Tommy Wilson, the Canadian graphic artist. Uh, he's known for his polarizing and uh, black and white artwork. Uh, it's very iconic. As soon as you see it, you probably know it's him. He's worked with a number of fantastic bands, a number of fantastic projects, including some of ours. Welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you for having me. Anytime. Uh, do you want to just tell anyone who doesn't know your work, sort of what you're all about and what type of work, you, how, how you would describe your art style, I guess? Uh, well, my name's Tommy Wilson. I live in Vancouver, British Columbia. I make a uh, pretty aggressive kind of demented, like agitprop stuff, all kind of uh, left wing leaning, I guess, always kind of lashing out and screaming at fucking something I don't like. So it's a it's a fun outlet to, you know, be creative and uh I use a lot of um, mixed media, like kind of like it's very much inspired by like 80s, 80s hardcore posters. So I kind of use a use a different technique, I guess, than most people like like I kind of assemble like everything just gets made digital and then it's all cut and pasted like physically and then scanned back in and then printed. And I kind of just do something, do something different every single time. So I don't have a really uniform uh, I think I would just get really bored if it was kind of just the same thing over and over. So I'm always just always experimenting with different ways to get textures and stuff like that. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, I love the fact that, like you said, each one's slightly different, like uh, has a very different feel to it, depending on what the topic is. Um, yeah, for and, sure. And I just wanted to say as well, thank you so much for the work you did for both of our charity samplers this year. Uh, you really helped us raise a bunch of money because of that awesome album art. Oh yeah, well, thank you for thank you for hitting me up on those. Oh, anytime. Uh, it yeah. was going to be now, always going to be in our back pocket from now on. If like, oh, who do you want to get to do this? It's political. Let's get Tommy. <laughs> oh yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I mean, I just wanted to say, I thought it was awesome that you've worked with the band as big as Infest. I mean, that's really cool. Yeah, that was uh, that was a fun. Well, I don't know if it, it was that was very stressful, but because uh, there was kind of a funny a funny backstory to that that I don't think I've ever really told anybody, but, okay. um, uh, cause Sandro from RSR, him and I have been in contact for quite a while. Like he's put out, he put out some records for my old band, uh, split open. So mm -hmm. I guess those guys were, they were out for obscene extreme and Sandro hits me up and he's like, Hey, like, could you do a shirt for infest today? And I was just like, holy shit, like, of, of course I will. Like, you know, they're like one of my favorite <laughs> bands of all time. Yeah. And I was I was just out of town and there was a power outage at my house. And my printer, like uh, my laser printer that's connected to my MacBook, that wasn't working at all because it was it's on like, you know, a Wi-Fi connection. So uh -huh. I just like, you know, had, like everything i do is like cut and paste mixed media type stuff and that was like that was the one graphic i've had to do that was just straight digital right because it didn't have access to a working printer mm -hmm. so i yeah i just kind of like i laid out the laid out the text in letra set and then took a picture of it and had to like email it to myself and just to get the like you know like the torn corners and stuff i was kind of like doing that with extra paper and like assembling it all in photoshop but like you know <laughs> ju just my luck like the one the one day that someone's like hey could you have this today that was the one day that my printers my fax machines just were totally out of commission but there was a really tight deadline on it so i remember it being like that element being really stressful like how am i gonna pull this off like i'm not a digital designer at all right <laughs> but i kind of i made it work and i think i've tricked enough people that uh yeah the no man slave graphic yeah that's a hundred percent photoshop really so <laughs> interesting i would never have guessed looking at it like you can't i mean you would obviously know but, but other people who did this style of art may know but the average person would not notice 
Oh yeah, for sure. And it's like, I don't know, I've also, I've spent enough time in Photoshop that I know kind of how to like duplicate things, kind of how to like sort of get that effect. You're never going to get that like, you know, authentic, just like randomly screwed up effects in Photoshop, you know, Uh you can, you can emulate it pretty. I've seen people come real close. But even then, it's like if you're like that interested in like mixed media and like analog artwork, like why are you doing this with a computer? Like why not just <laughs> make it by hand if you're that in love with this style, right? So right, yeah, uh, I yeah, I definitely had to take that route for the Infest shirt. But everything else has been photocopied at least once, right? So <laughs> what uh, what are some other bands you've done uh, shirts and posters and album covers for? um it's a pretty big list at this point um, what was the uh first one sorry what was that what was the first band the first band oof um i don't know because i always was making like show posters when i was really young like even if the like just when i was bored i would just make show posters for shows that didn't necessarily exist i just kind of did that for fun but i think the um the first band that i was in that kind of started like touring and doing records and like making shirts and stuff was called uh war hero i think we started that i was 17 when we started that band so yeah that was kind of the first time i had to you know get a bit more serious about like you know using photoshop and computers and stuff like that but also didn't really know what i was doing until i like went to college and learned about like proper print resolution like a lot of these a lot of these old graphics for that band were pretty pretty fucking shoddy compared to the stuff <laughs> i'm making now right so. <laughs> what are, what were some of the favorites you've done then if uh the list is super long um working with jerome's dream was awesome uh we were kind of just like cracking jokes and you know that that was a lot of fun right like those mm-hmm. guys were like very responsive to messages so that was really fun. Uh, working with Drop Dead was really cool. Uh, that was just kind of me and Ben collaborating on a shirt. I think we ripped through like four or five different ideas before we initially, uh, uh, you know, decided on the like hatred burning graphic. Um, let me see. Working with Six Two Five is always cool. That's been one of my favorite labels since I was like you know twelve years old. Like the first show I went to had a Six Two Five band on on the bill. So I you know I've been following that label for you know pretty much my whole life, right? So I, I actually saw that one. I had like a, the second and third picture had a cat or something, and it said like uh, play yeah. pasta <laughs> hoser. Yeah, yeah, there was the the Bob and Doug one that said "Play Faster, Hoser," and then yeah. one of uh, one of Max's cat. Uh, <laughs> I, f- I forget what his cat. I forget what his cat's name is called, but he sent me he sent me a picture, and he's like, "Are you able to cut this out?" I'm like, "Yes, Max, I'm able to cut this out in Photoshop 2023." <laughs> So <laughs> yeah, we we uh, yeah, that was kind of like that was kind of a collab between like. Uh, me and max and max's wife and like the printer even like helped out with the design so like that that 30 year anniversary that was more of like a group project almost uh but uh yeah the stay faster hoser i think he was like oh i just need a graphic like do whatever and just you know ended up coming up with that and there was also the like mick harris like stay fast uh shirt that we did for like the grind mafia thing so I can't remember if that was last year or the year before. Uh, there's just like too much stuff to kind of keep up with, right? Yeah, no, you got a lot Ooh. going on. <laughs> yeah, I'm always pretty busy. So, and what, then, um, oh, what's your like average like output for like a month? Um, it greatly varies, I guess. Depends on what I'm doing. Uh, my band just recently played. Uh, was it late may we played five shows in the bay area with masculine maniacs and uh then i was home for a week and then i went on vacation to los angeles and we played another show and then i just kind of like dicked around for a week so june was pretty slow um it just like depends yeah it greatly varies but i'd say in a month i'd they really make quite a bit of stuff right whether it's just like commissions or personal projects or 
posters for shows my band is playing or whatever it's it's quite quite a lot right yeah yeah and well, i think it, it kind of comes and goes like recently i just uh i was super bored and just ended up whipping up like five po or five or six posters at like 3 a.m and i was like well that's <laughs> not I, like i'm fe i'm feeling super creative right now i may as well make all this shit right so and then the next day it's like ah, i'm burnt out like i don't want to fucking do anything so kind of all <laughs> it's kind of kind of all over the place right so i'm uh i'm the same way with writing like uh there's some days i'll wake up and i'll knock out like five album reviews and then i'm like all right i don't do anything for the next five days like it's, yeah it's, i kind of like it comes and goes in waves i guess so yep yep yeah <laughs> um you mentioned your band do you want to tell us a little bit about the band like well, what's the name what type of stuff do you play uh it's uh we're called new sweat i play drums uh it's more like a you know fast core power violence band nice uh i'd say more than anything we kind of sound like cr like the most comparison we get is crossed out okay or like you know kind of uh do you know hatred surge or like endless blockade or kind of that like pv resurgence that was going on like i'm trying to think it was maybe like 2000 2001 i think that shit was kind of peaking again no i don't know those 2001 those 2006 i can't fucking really remember but those are those are really good bands so um we definitely take a lot of influence from uh yeah endless blockade and uh hatred surge um we play quite a bit i'd say we play vancouver like once a month but like give or take we i think we've honestly played more shows in the states because uh, the the right. band was the band was started during the pandemic, right? So we right. like put a demo out, couldn't really play. I think like within our first year, we had only played two shows, right? Wow! And we had two releases out, so yeah. And then we went on tour, so I definitely think we played more shows in the states than we have in Canada at this point. But um, yeah, it's a fun band. We have uh, a four-way split that's going to be on six two five with uh, Hacked Apart and Con Artist and Body Rot, uh, like one of those like BC like geography comps. And uh, <laughs> then yeah, we just like just two days ago finished mixing our uh, new seven inch that psh, I, don't know. I, I can't say if it'll be out this year or not because record plants are taking so long. Yeah, these days. So yeah, that's a that's a whole nightmare right there right yeah yeah for this four-way we had sent our tracks off in like january and we had like just gotten past presses right so yeah 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 i know a lot of people uh looking to uh eastern europe type thing to try and get around that um but it's like sometimes it turns out great sometimes it turns out not great that's the only thing with, with doing that way yeah for sure i don't know i think a pandemic just kind of fucked everything up yeah it's it's yeah. that, and I think it's also the fact that vinyls had such a resurgence so quickly. Um, yeah. If you look at, like, the growth numbers the last, I don't know, maybe five or six years, it's like it just keeps growing every year demand-wise. So now you have all these mainstream artists that are jumping on the vinyl bandwagon. And yeah. th the plants that, like, uh, smaller bands use end up getting the overflow production for a lot of the bigger plants for those massive orders from, like, People like Adele, Taylor Swift. Uh, I was gonna, Ab I was Abba. gonna, I was gonna mention Adele because uh, I think she pressed what like a hundred thousand. Yep. Cop copies of her latest album, and now they're just at every fucking like junk store you can think of. Like, yep. Can't yep. get rid of the fucking things at all. Yeah, and they charge like <laughs> yeah. 50, 50, 50 bucks or something for, for Adele's vinyl that no one wants. Oh, Jesus. perfect. Yeah. Well, I've What's seen like, I've, right, I've right, seen, right. seen a lot of people on Twitter making fun of it. They're just like, look at this rack of these fucking Adele albums for like four or five bucks that like no one gives a fuck about, right? So <laughs> Yeah. I wonder if it's come down. I'm gonna have a look on Amazon right now and see if it did come down because nope. I'm uh, sure. <laughs> still well, forty dollars forty dollars seventy four. <laughs> still over forty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. Wow, so, it's ridiculous. Yeah, but th that's the problem. It's like these orders choke up the entire world system, and then all these other millions of bands that want to put out, like, hey, I want to do like a hundred, two hundred vinyls. Like, yeah, that would be like a year. <laughs>
Yeah, and like you know, the price has gone through the fucking roof too. Oh, like, yeah. um, I think the, the first time I was, you know, doing a seven inch, I was like nineteen. That was uh my band War Hero, and I remember it's just like <clears throat> took about two months from sending the email with the tracks to just having all of them right like the test press is approved and they yeah. used to they used to cost about like they used to cost about like two dollars two dollars and 20 cents to press a seven inch and nowadays you're looking at like six or seven fucking dollars like per record right yeah. so yeah it's jumped up a lot yeah yeah it's like uh, this the same with even secondhand vinyl. I'm so bummed that like there were all those years when no one bought vinyl, and I was so many times I was at like garage sales or thrift shops, and the oh yeah, it's like ten bucks for this whole box, and there was like classic stuff in there. But back then I didn't collect it, and now yeah. you can't, now you go to those stores, all the good stuff's being picked through. It's all gone because everyone collects vinyl again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and they're just like they're just fucking harder to move than ever before. With like you know most kids like switching over to digital with like spotify and shit yeah. like that it was yeah, like I'm fair sure. enough like you kind of have to go out buy some fucking busted record player or some new record player from shoppers drug mart that's gonna break in a fucking year or whatever so it's it's a pain in the ass for sure maybe that's part of the appeal of it i guess i don't know <laughs> yeah i think i, I yeah. mean brendan, brendan and i both collect vinyl so we yeah we uh it is part of the appeal but I, actually going to the stores and digging through stuff and finding gems is like a huge part of it for me. It's like half the fun is actually just seeing what you can get in the diggers dens and stuff. Right. Oh yeah, right. for sure. Yeah. I mean, if I want to pre-order it, I want it, I'm going to do that, you know, right. but then yeah. there is something to like, you know, go into like a record riot or something like that or wherever, you know, and like they have these like pop-ups, you know, yeah. or just like, you know, places that show up and at like a show and they have like, you know a table full of vinyls it's like yeah let's let's look through this and see what they got you know it's yeah sweet. for sure like at mdf like we went to maryland death fest last year and they had like oh multiple, yeah they had like whole vinyl tents of this random collections of stuff for sale and we found some really good stuff in there oh that's yeah, cool man. right on yeah i've never i've never been to maryland death fest we are we're actually going again next year. We kind of made it like an annual tradition because I live on the west coast, Brendan lives on the east coast. So once a year, we try to go together to hang out at. That. Oh, right so, on! Yeah, cool. Yeah, this this year was canceled because they're funneling all the money to next year to do a really big one. Um, right. So they ended up shutting down the UK Death Fest permanently, uh, and oh, you now wow. they're focusing all of their money just on Maryland Death Fest. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, yeah, I'm fucking kinda... awesome kind of a bit out of the loop with uh, like i don't really know the guys who do that so i just kind of see the huge poster and i'm like oh that looks cool but i never really end up you know going to it i think most of the shows i go to are pretty much in california like i end up okay. there every every couple months or whatever <laughs> yeah, yeah I, i'm in san diego so I'm, i got a lot of uh local stuff here as well yeah there's a lot of shows that go on down there so too much like uh, yeah yeah it's like there's literally an evening coming up uh next next friday i think it's like next friday or the one after or whatever we had two bands that i really wanted to see were playing the same night at the exact same time and i was like yeah come on <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know i kind of I like i think when i was younger i always wanted to be like oh it'd be so awesome to like live in california because there's like so much shit going on there yeah but after I like, you know, spent a spent a bunch of time down there, it's like fucking the most of your days just like sitting in traffic, right? Well, that's what I that's why I, I, I could never do LA. I absolutely hate LA for that reason. But oh for sure. Yeah. San, San Diego is not like that at all. Like uh right. unless you hit like peak hour, because the whole city is freeways, which is really nice. So like uh -huh. uh, I can, where I live, I can kind of get to almost anywhere in the city within 15 minutes. Oh, that's that's pretty decent. Yeah, 15 minutes without traffic, like maybe with traffic 40 minutes, but that's still not terrible. It's like peak hour. Yeah, LA fucking, you know, even at six in the morning, you're driving like 10 miles an hour. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I, so I it's was just up, like it never stops. I was up there uh, on the weekend and we were driving back from uh, LA down the south and uh, it was 1145 at night and there was bumper to bumper traffic. 
I was like, are you yeah. kidding me? Like, uh-huh. Sounds what? about right, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, as- aside, aside from that, it's just like every single one of my friends has some just fucking, just horror story of like just guns and drugs and people just getting just shit kicked. And it's like just fucking, <laughs> it's wild down there. Yeah, LA is pretty, LA can be pretty rough. Uh, yeah. Especially depending where you go. There's, there's a lot... It's just this. This tw- if you look at the LA basin, it's like twenty million people, or whatever. It's like there's just yeah. a lot of everything. There's a lot, like there's a lot of wealth, there's a lot of poverty, a lot of crime. There's you know, it's like it's just yeah. a lot, and it's all uh-huh. just compounded into this space and concrete packed all around it. It's yeah, it's a jungle. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's fun to go every once in a while, but I like, yeah, I don't think I could hack living there, right? So. No, I feel the same way. It's it's close enough to me. I can just catch a bus to Seattle and hop on a fucking plane. Oh, yeah. I was was wondering how much it costs you to fly internationally. So you you go down to Seattle and then fly because it's domestic way cheaper, right? It's quite a bit cheaper to fly like within the States. So I generally just tend to tend to do that. Right. It's like you can spend 30 you can spend 30 bucks on a Greyhound and save fucking 200 on your flight. Right. So exactly. I I do the same thing with Mexico. Like I there's a land border you can walk across to the Tijuana airport from San Diego. Oh, Uh, yeah. And if you fly from there, it's domestic in Mexico instead of international. So you can get like uh, I was looking at flights. If I had gone from San Diego, 300, I fly from Tijuana, 100. So yeah. So yeah it's like you know i'm self-employed so it's not like i have not like i don't have time to jump on a bus or whatever right so right yeah yeah um i was just gonna ask as well speaking of self-employed you brought it up uh you obviously have you published a couple of books that are for sale um yep. what was your most recent one uh the the recent one that just came out that one's uh it's like just punk graphics uh, like okay. old show posters and kind of more of an emphasis on that, right? There's not really any like political stuff or agitprop in it. But uh, that one's called Painful Existence. It just came out. I have a bunch of copies of it. And uh, the first one was called I'd Like My Life Back that came out uh, last year. You know, it was pretty much just um, just posters I'd made from the pan, you know, from the pandemic when I was just sitting at home bored out of my fucking mind that's awesome and then you had a book uh a larger book that came out uh was that 2022 called i'd like my life back yeah that was the that was the first one this one's a little bit smaller because the print shop had kind of you know jacked the rates up and shit so Uh yeah the first one is 200 pages this one is 128 pages Okay. And yeah, I'm currently working on a third one that's probably going to be more along the line, more along the lines of like 200. So nice. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Nice. And yeah. What's, uh, you have a series of uh, issues uh, of a, something called Homicide Report. Yeah. Yeah. I've been doing that uh, pretty much since I quit my job. That's been like one of my just something to kind of do in my downtime. And uh, funny, like the I guess the the story behind that or kind of why that exists is because, you know, yeah. Right. When I quit my job, like Instagram just pulled like a whole bunch of posts. Right. Yeah. You know, for just, you know, kind of being offensive and stuff like that. Like they kind of, it was kind of more so that they were like sending a message just like, Hey, don't make, don't make stuff like this anymore. Like we don't like shit like this. Right. Like they were like right. really cracking down on censorship and uh i was like well you know i kind of like i don't want to like stop making stuff like this so then i was like all right well i can just make all this just ratchet offensive shit and then just chuck it in the homicide report zine and then i don't have to worry about posts getting taken down or like getting in trouble online right so that was kind of <laughs> kind of the like intention behind that project right it's like if you want the like yeah it's kind of like you know it's like i just work on it until it's done and then when i post it i'm like hey like if you guys want the like if you guys want the like uncensored like ratchet shit (laughs) like just go just go get this right because yeah like i said i don't have to worry about like the algorithm fucking me over or like you know get like because i've had i've had a pretty good uh pretty good amount of strikes on my page right i think they only give you so many before they 
delete your yeah. account and then I'm out of a fucking job. So, you know, right. I kind of have to be a bit, I kind of have to be a bit cautious with what I, with what I post on my, on my main page at least. Right. But with the zines, it's just like, yeah, just, just make it just fuck it. It's almost like, you know, as offensive as I can make it. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Tommy Wilson after dark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah it's like i don't know you can essentially you can blame mark zuckerberg because if he, those guys weren't being such hard asses about it like no way would i have like made that well i probably would uh, i'm not gonna say no way i wouldn't have made it but that was certainly like you know one of the ideas of it right or it's like yeah you know can't can't, can't get in trouble if this isn't online well i'm you i shouldn't say that but um <laughs> yeah you, you get what i'm getting at they're all pretty yeah, limited can't get... right they're all they're all kind <laughs> of limited to like 30 or 50 copies right so that's yeah. kind of just like yeah for the people who want me just fucking at my most unhinged like that's the project <laughs> they should be paying attention to and yeah the the third book that i was talking about it's still you know i'm not it's not far along i'm going to if I work my ass off, I might be able to pull it off by like winter, but like I, I'm kind of thinking maybe next year might be more realistic. But that was kind of, you know, that was going to be like a collection of like the, you know, just like the gnarliest homicide report posters and like a bunch of uh, just, uh, you know, the, the most like deranged of the deranged. That was kind of the point of that zine and the like third book. So that's awesome. Uh, yeah. yeah. I have to, uh, I think I'm gonna to have to get some of those. I want to see what uh, I know <laughs> the most oh, yeah. duration on Hinge looks like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. A lot of the, um, I think the only one that's in stock right now is uh, issue five. I don't really have that many copies of it. Okay. Left, but um, yeah, there's certainly going to be a you know collection book of just all the like a lot of it's pretty offensive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, yeah, you know, so some of my friends even are just like, "What the fuck is this shit, man?" It's like, I don't know. It's just like that's kind of like that's kind of just my sense of humor, right? Is like just brutal nihilism, unhinged complaining, and just you know, like you know, I'm not gonna say like extremism, but a lot of the shit's just like, yeah, fucking overthrow the government, fuck you, just you know. That's where all the all the whining and complaining goes, and <laughs> yeah, I think that's yeah, all, all the, all the like unhinged violence. So more productive outlet than most people complaining on Facebook. So right. Oh, right. I do. I do that. I do that too. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Has there uh, been a, a commission piece that you've been like, no, I, I can't make that. <laughs> uh yeah a couple times a couple times for sure i've had a couple of people ask me to do like anime stuff and i'm uh, not not an anime fan in the least bit or really like you know i've had people ask me for you know just like like I, i'm not an illustrator by any means i can't draw no one wants to see that which is why most of my work is you know gravitates towards like typography manipulation and mm -hmm. you know di digital collage and stuff like that right like so if someone's like if someone's like oh use like sailor moon or not that i've i, I have had that requested me requested of me before but you know just like children's drawings and shit it's like fucking <laughs> why it's like you're trying to make like a punk show but like i don't know what the big deal is with like making punk show posters just look like punk show posters. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know what everyone's problem with that is, but um, yeah, I don't know. There's, I, I get asked for some funny ones sometimes. I think it was like, uh, like working with fit for an autopsy. There was a couple times where they're like, we need a shirt design of like an explosion and a crowd watching and like a fucking, you know, like American flag. And just like, they have like this checklist of like 16 <laughs> different things. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, like no picture of this exists. This is going to be like a fucking like 20 layer, like photo montage. Right. <laughs> that, that, that kind of, yeah. That kind of gets put together digital and then is all, you know, fax machined and fucked up afterwards. So 
yeah not that like those uh does that image exist now is that is that yeah you yeah i forget like i said i've done so much shit i forget what the fuck it was uh what the like tagline was but that was that was pretty time consuming it was fun and like certainly cha more challenging than like most projects right like, yeah i, I can imagine I'm gonna yeah. if it's on your Instagram, I'll I'll uh, scroll back through tonight and find it because I really want to see the uh, <laughs> what what, what see happened that. with that. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Actually, I have my laptop open and I'm just kind of ripping through it right now. It'll be in the because you know how I have the like highlights on my page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be, the, it'll be in the it'll be in the shirt graphics section. Okay, I'm gonna have so. a look. I want to yeah, see I can't. I can't remember what the fuck the like tagline was because I've done a I've done a handful of projects for that band, but um, that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, they're I'm... always really cool to work with. Well, I mostly just work with uh, oh, Will. There is... Oh, hang on, no, that's one of them. So I saw a different autopsy. It's like riot police. Uh, there's one of the yeah, oh, yeah Nazi go. beating up a Nazi. Yeah, uh, that one was hard too because. Um, you know they're kind of a bigger band so i was kind of uh a little bit on edge about you know stealing copyright for that one right, don't get me right. wrong i stole copyright anyways but um <laughs> yeah that one that one was pretty rough too because i think yeah they were like they were like we need a um like we want a picture of like a nazi getting punched and it's so, like that's kind of a difficult one because there's not really that many pictures of people like holding up a sign that's like i'm a nazi or whatever like right or if they do have like some swastika on their shirt or whatever it's kind of there's only like a couple pictures of that and they're like you know getty images ones that are like hey if you use this we're gonna have to fucking sue you for like thousands upon thousands of dollars right so i didn't take that one i kind of had to pull some resources and do what i could but that was that was another like yeah the photo montage shit is uh it's pretty challenging. I usually find a way around it, but you know, oh, here it is. Yeah, it's called uh, Human Extermination. And it was posted with the like punitive damage graphic that I did. Oh, okay. Yeah. It says, oh, here, I just saw you did, uh, you did the album art for Domestic Terror. I, I didn't realize that was you. I love that album. Yeah. Yeah. That was a gatefold LP. That's cool. Yeah. Um, Brendan, Domestic Terror uh, has a member of, oh, what are they called? Uh, Weed Demon in it. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know who that band is. They're awesome. They're really cool. Um, okay. This, but one of the guys from that is. Slow, bluesy, sonar, fucking doom. Heavy. Oh, yeah. Really, that's really sweet. heavy. Um, and okay. that's what you did. You did uh, Uniform. Crater Maker. Well. Check that album out. Yeah, Crater Maker is great. Um, yeah, okay. That's why you did uniform as well. That's awesome. I absolutely love uniform. Yeah, I've worked with those guys a couple yeah. times. They're really, really yeah. nice and cool to work with. So they have such a cool sound. Yeah, for sure. Did uh I mean like I personally for me the, the long walk was like incredible. Uh Shane was good, but the long walk just had like a different bite to it. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, there's like, you know, I I do know what uniform sounds like, but for the most part, I mostly just listen to power violence. Like I've had uh, I, my, my one friend in Sacramento, eh, he's like, he's like, oh, yeah, I play in this other band. I'm like, oh, I've never heard you guys. He's like, you've definitely made posters for us. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm like, well, mo most of the time when I'm working, I'm just listening to like, I don't know, I'm fucking some dumb shit like celine dion or like some top 40s some, like something extremely not brutal while i'm like you know photocopying someone dying or whatever for a punk <laughs> show like <laughs> if only you knew what was happening behind the scenes <laughs> it's awesome I, uh, so obviously you make some pretty politically charged stuff have you ever had like a backlash online from like people on the other side of the spectrum Oh yeah, someone recently told me to kill myself over <laughs> over the like fuck your flag patriotism sucks one that I posted on the wow. 4th of July and I just like, you know, I wasn't upset about it. I was like that's pretty funny. Like this dude's clearly very pissed off about this poster. So that was uh that was my most recent backlash. 
nothing nothing too rough right like usually it's some snide ass comment that's like you know fuck your shitty poster you dumb libtard or some shit like that right but, <laughs> yeah yeah i've never i've never gotten any like Death never rest. gotten any like yeah yeah and like some of my some of my friends who make similar stuff they certainly have so, yeah that's kind of surprising yeah, it's, it's a, like it's very a, uh very strongly yeah, it's definitely something that, like, you know, people who make stuff like this do occasionally have to deal with. I haven't. Right. Uh, one of my friends, I uh, maybe I'll just leave his name out of this, but we were oh. staying at his. We were staying at his house down in uh, Portland, and he he had made a, a pretty pretty offensive graphic that is no longer allowed on Instagram. It was at the time, but now if you post it, it'll just get taken down, right? But he was saying that people were like fucking like, you know, threatening him. He was getting fucking, you know, all these sketchy emails, people like driving past his house and like, you know, like fucking doxing him and shit. So, whoa. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty real. But, uh, yeah, so. It's just funny though, because like a lot of the people that will be harassing him are the same people that never shut up about freedom of speech. So. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> funny, funny how that one works. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I've yeah. yeah, mostly I mostly just get some like snide ass comments, right? It's just like no one gives a fuck or like fuck you, right? And I just kinda like I just kinda laugh it off. Like none of it's really been none of it's really been too serious or too intimidating, yes. right? So well, that's good to hear. I'm glad. I, I don't want yeah, to hear yeah. and stuff. I, oh, I do yeah. I it does lost. it does happen yeah like i was looking through like one of your posts before and i saw a comment it was the um it was the one with uh trump getting like tr- uh arrested oh have and, fun uh, in, have fun in jail asshole yeah that one um and one of the <laughs> one, of, one of the comments was like <laughs> noticeable lack of anti hillary and biden co- content oh like, yeah yeah like, yeah no shit <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, like yeah because those got uh those people didn't get fucking indicted that day so but also it's like read yeah. the re- read the page like it's not it's it's obviously going to be more directed at people like him it's very politically charged against fascism and all that sort of right thing, so. yeah for sure and i think uh yeah I'll, uh, i don't know i've seen a couple designers that you know they'll the, once again making similar shit that i do but they're taking they're taking like shots at fucking biden or whatever which really just makes it come across like you're pro trump if anything right Definitely. yeah so yeah i don't know they're like because these pages don't have trump posters they only have biden posters it kind of comes off not more as like anti-authority it just comes off as like anti fucking you know democratic right so right yeah but whatever, I don't, I don't care if you want to make that shit. But it's like I don't know, right wing punk art. Like that's kind of fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and I yeah, do this... occasionally, I do occasionally stumble across some shit like this. Is just like you know, what juxtaposition, right? So <laughs> I'm in a couple of Facebook group, like punk groups and stuff, and uh, I have seen people make the argument, and there's some pretty big mental gymnastics here saying. Uh, it's now punk to be conservative because right uh, yeah because punk is meant to be anti the status quo anti authority and the authority and the status quo is now liberal so therefore it's conservative to be it's punk to be conservative and like really i never i never really thought about i never thought about that one (laughs) It's what you just have to you just have to like switch the political spectrum like depending on if there's a different yeah. holy shit yeah that's a that's a that's a good point i like that one a lot it's a fun one. Oh yeah fuck when i saw that my mind was kind of blown i was like huh yeah that's a, that's a bit of that's a bit of like a brain fuck there so i don't know i'm not sh- i'm not too sure what to make of that one but uh, i think maybe that's a fucking troll i don't know i don't <laughs> think so looking at the post like just yeah, judging by, right. like the dude and the comments and stuff like it's so hard to tell nowadays because some people commit so much to a troll account it's really like oh yeah for sure yeah uh yeah it's because like, so worked up, man. Like, 
with the with the internet, your idiotic opinions can be instantly expressed and paraded. You know. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, oh, what a magical place. Yeah, right. <laughs> we talked about this a bunch of times on the podcast. It's kind of it's definitely like hastening the downfall of society. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's that uh, documentary that we I gave me mentioned this a bunch of times, but it's great. Um, Brendan, what was that one called about social media? Um, the social dilemma. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen that one, Tommy? Uh, no, I don't think so. I honestly don't watch it ton of movies like my attention spans i can't really sit still for an hour and a half okay. uh i'll check it out i'll check it out maybe in like 20 minute increments yeah yeah that's the way to do it yeah i uh i do that with some stuff like that i kind of break it up mm. things um, right yeah but it's definitely worth a watch that's kind of like they had a lot of people who used to be like founding members or designers or like engineers and stuff in a lot of the big tech firms like coming up and speaking out against them and kind of telling you how it actually works behind the scenes, what they're aware of, what the dangers uh-huh. really are. Uh, yeah. It's very, uh, it's, I mean, a lot of it's like kind of obvious, but some of it's very eye opening. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I have like, um, I might not check that out. Cause that might just piss <laughs> me off a lot. Yeah. Cause like, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think like, like, I, I don't know if you've, uh, seen me lash out at Instagram multiple mm. times and there's m- much more where that came from. But, I just um, actually, uh, there's a, a uh, fuck you an, shitty apps. Oh fuck yeah, that one. That one's actually censored, uh, because there's a a target on his face with a bunch of blood dripping down. So that was from Homicide Report. Um, but yeah, there's like an there's an essay in my first book, and there's also an essay in Homicide Report too of just like how much more fuck these apps have gotten like totally oh, yeah. instagram and like you know i grew up like i think it was around like 20 or 21 i made a facebook account mm-hmm. so i've been like pretty active on social media for quite a while and just seeing like just how many times they've just changed it just over and over and over it kind of like it's almost like um like yeah you know, i think like they had made these social media apps with the intention of like, Oh, you like connect with your friends and see what they're up to and shit. And over, over time, it's kind of morphed into, we are going to like just rig your home feed. We are going to fucking like extort pages for money. And like, you know, it's, it's not about like connection anymore. It's about revenue, right? Look at Instagram. The fucking thing is just fucking littered with ads. Oh yeah. yeah. And and yeah. then like unless you're playing the game and doing what you want, like spending money on advertising and stuff, they just send you your shit. No one sees your stuff. Yeah, yep. and that's I think one of the most infuriating aspects is, you know, like my ability to make money and like pay rent and shit is in the hands of Mark Zuckerberg. Like that's a pretty fucking rough place to be, right? Right. So right. yeah, I think on um yeah, on Thursday, I picked my books up from the shop, and I was like, oh, I'll just drop them on Friday, like, you know, hopefully I'll sell a bunch, because maybe Friday's fucking everyone's payday and shit, so I posted a reel, because, you know, like, I think this was a couple of years ago, they started just slaughtering people's engagements, yeah. and then Adam Missouri, the head of Instagram, was like, yeah, we're kind of like looking to shift in a video so that we can compete with TikTok, which is kind of absurd because that's almost like a fucking, you know, completely different industry, right? Like TikTok right. is like a vi- it's a video platform and that's all it well, that's all it is, right? Right. Like I, I haven't spent much time on TikTok. I don't really like it that much. But um yeah, so then we had to start posting reels to like, you know, like a get around this shitty algorithm b kind of you know help them stay relevant right but i posted a reel the other day and it only got like five thousand views which isn't even half of my followers so it's like you know it's like it's pretty hard to fucking win at instagram these days right like but we we have like four we have like four thousand followers on instagram and our Mm -hmm. post that we made today got three likes 
And I was like, right. are you fucking Jesus serious? Fucking like Christ, man. Like, yeah. Seriously? I, and I checked the view insights and it says 79 people saw it. Like, seriously, we have 4,000 followers. Why does 79 people see our post? Like, well, it's kind right. of like the um the algorithm, like the algorithm they've been on for a minute is it it kind of functions more like a popularity contest, right? That's why you will quite often see posts that either have like a hundred likes or fucking thousands, right? Because right. like, you know, someone will like someone posts something, they automatically see that it's getting likes and comments and they're like, oh, this is good. This is worth something to us. And then they fucking blast it, right? Right. But exactly. then when you but then when you post something that's kind of getting no likes and no comments, then they're like, oh well, fuck it. This is you know that this doesn't benefit us so they just shadow just the fucking piss out of it right so yeah yeah it's like it's infuriating yeah it trying to yeah. run a business and just stay relevant online right so because you can do everything right that you've been taught to do for like social media you, like uh -huh, every, yeah. every box and then just no one sees it <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I think when I was when I was trying to figure out what was going on, right? Kind of like shortly after I quit my job, I was like, you know, digging through blogs and being like, what the fuck is going on? Like, why is my views just continuously get cut in half? Yeah. And then I found out they were like, you know, gravitating towards the the reels shit. Yeah. Yeah. But my, you know, I'm not too fucking interested in that. I'm not a video creator. I'm a fucking graphic designer, right? Right. But like one one of the most like heartbreaking comments I saw was this guy. He was like, I've been a fucking like pro photographer for like 15 years. I have no interest in film. I have no experience in film. And he's like, I have done nothing but just make like wholesome content for Instagram and just like you know, nothing edgy, never got a post removed. And this, yeah. all this app has done is just fucking shit on me and hide yeah. my work and put me out of a fucking job. Right. So, right. Yeah. It's like, it's pretty cutthroat, man. It's like, I like, that's why I don't post that much anymore. It's like, I don't even really want to like, I don't want to support them, you know, not that fucking right. quit, not that I'm going to jump on Twitter and be like, Oh yeah. Elon's, the lesser of two evils because they're both assholes right it'd be cool right. if they just had <laughs> if that fight had happened and they cool both died if... yeah right yeah that'd be nice. uh, yeah i'm looking forward to this fight apparently but um uh, yeah. there's been there's been rumors of those guys fighting i'm not i haven't been fucking paying attention but well, yeah the, they talked about it but the coliseum in rome like non-jokingly offered to let them fight there if they want to so right. i think that should be the new like sport that we all enjoy is billionaires fighting to the death in the Coliseum. Yeah, yeah. I hope they. I hope it's just like punch each other in the like like badly punch each other out at the same time. Hit the head on that, the that's what I want to see. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just like I don't know. I arguably, I arguably hate Mark Zuckerberg a lot more. Me too. Because I've like because I'm so much more like reliant on Meta platforms to work. Right, like. I, right. Like I post on I post on Twitter quite a bit, and I think I've only gotten like two or three commissions this whole fucking time, like just directly from Twitter. Right. But like you know, like my entire design career, like ninety fucking eight percent of it has come from Instagram, right? So, right, yeah. I, mean, I, I would is... also say that like what they've given and taken from society, mm -hmm. Mark Zuckerberg's done a lot more damage to the human race. Uh, with, oh fuck yeah! With that, what he's unleashed on society, versus yeah, yeah, and, and then at least Elon right. to balance himself out. It made all of his uh, electric vehicle technology open source, which has massively progressed. He's, he's kind of yeah. got other. He's kind of got other aspects, right? So, yeah, he's, whereas he's, he's, Mark he has Zuckerberg, some redeeming qualities. Yeah, for sure. But like, yeah, I don't know. Just all the like, just the amount of fucking scandals and shit, just to like, and all these like bombshells that fucking mark zuckerberg has you know had over the fucking years it's kind of crazy to like just keep using this shit and like keep supporting these guys after they've just been, like you know the guy's a fucking asshole right he's like just a <laughs> revenue machine and that's about it right well, i i still think he's uh i mean it's a running joke and but he's a lizard person 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was that was that South Park? I think that started that. I can't remember. Someone did, but then he kind of like know. the people then started reading into a lot of the weird shit he'd done and said in interviews, and like, see, it confirms it. And it's, <laughs> I just find it, I just find it really fun to like go. I don't believe it, but it's fun to go along with it, like it is true, and then watch right. videos of him in interviews and be like. He is a lizard person. <laughs> they like they like put like the lizard eye kind of thing going on. Yeah, uh, there, there was a time like, that he, he literally yeah. said, "When I was human," and then he's like, "I uh, I still am human. I, I've always been human." <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, I like the I like the one of him where the I forget what the fuck it was, but some lady's like, "Oh, what's going on with this jacket?" Interviewing, and he is just fucking just sweating like a motherfucker like he looks like he's gonna fucking cry right and she's like she's like oh what's going on with your jacket is this a fucking illuminati logo or something and he's just like <laughs> like <laughs> like how is the how is the most like socially awkward human that exists on the planet in charge of like social this. media right like this makes yeah. no fucking Makes no fucking sense. So, <laughs> did you ever see the the smoked meats one? Yeah, that was super deranged. That was weird. It's, it's like, like <laughs> insane. The smoke some meats with my buddy smoking meats. You know, smoking it's like over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah, it's like what the, it's like what the fuck is this guy just like vlogging in his backyard? Like what the I was like what the fuck is this? Like since when does this guy like make like fucking videos? Right. So right. And yeah. then the, sw- the sweet baby Ray on the bookshelf. Yeah, that was uh, really that was really <laughs> odd. <laughs> it's like the um Truman Show like placement. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, I actually forgot about that. That's the Jim Carrey one, right? Yeah, yes. that's a great movie. So it's like they're just like placing. You know, we're talking about sweet babies right now. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to. I'm it's gonna working. have to watch. I'm gonna have to watch that again because I kind of forgot that existed. The Truman yeah, Show. Yeah, that's a good movie. No, no, the uh, the Mark Zuckerberg, um, the the one where he's fucking barbecuing and acting super <laughs> fucking weird. Smoke some meats. Yeah, smoke meats. <laughs> yeah, that was a good meme. That was a couple was. Of years ago now. Yeah, it was. And then yeah. the, uh, after that, there was the water scandal with like, how he doesn't drink water like a person. Oh yeah, what? when he's I, in that I, in that hearing. Yeah, I remember there was uh this one video, or I think it was a picture, right, where he's like ski doing or some shit, and he just had his face covered in like the most obscene amount of sunscreen. Oh yes, so, like, <laughs> like, the yeah, entire yeah. face is like <laughs> completely white. It's like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? <laughs> he's not human. It's, he's trying to imitate yeah, he's, human he's, behavior. He's, He's not person. human. He's, He's like, just a lizard. He's a lizard revenue machine. So. <laughs> <laughs> There's an animated series on Netflix about the Illuminati. It's really funny. Um, uh, they portray him as a lizard person. It's called Inside Job. And it's basically a whole uh, show making fun of QAnon. And like everything oh, that they awesome. believe. Uh, uh, oh, awesome. Yeah, I think I've seen it. It's awesome. It's like a it's yeah. like a an old animation, and then everything that QAnon believes is actually real in this world. And then oh, the yeah. organi- the government organization that keeps it under wraps. Yeah, yeah, worth watching. Very funny. Awesome. Yeah, I'm just writing this down in case I forget it. So there's only two seasons, and there's meant to be a third, I think, but it got canceled. So oh yeah, whatever. Netflix never yeah. sticks with anything good. No, nope. right? Not that I have an account, but. Um... I'd imagine they they suck too. So, well, they they have the weirdest like uh, model for re, re, uh, renewing series. It's like basically just even if it has consistent viewers, if it's under a certain threshold, they just cancel it. Even if they like it looks on a cliffhanger, like so, so season two ends like oh man, season three is going to be good. There's a huge cliffhanger. They're just like eh, and they just don't do another one. And they do that oh, all yeah. the time. They just scrap show after show after show after right. Show. So. Well, just just like just like Zuckerberg and Instagram, right? If this isn't fucking worth it, if this isn't worth anything to us, then fuck you. No one gets to no one gets to see it. So, right, yeah, yeah. It seems to be like a lot of the men, like a mentality that like a lot of these entertainment. I know there's a podcast, but I just did the finger quotes entertainment platforms. Right, right. Uh, that's what they're doing. I know you can't see anything, but I did the finger quotes when I said, "Yeah, 
but uh yeah i don't know i don't like it i don't like it that much yeah there was another thing i was gonna say is like uh i think the fucking the like meta whistleblower was like these assholes will like fucking you know like if someone if someone has a fucking controversial opinion or something they will just blast that in their algorithms because they want people fighting and staying on their app like they don't give a fuck if you're like enjoying yourself they want you like fucking riled up and checking your app and telling people to go fuck themselves but at the same time they also want to look good for their advertisers so then they'll go ahead and take so you you have to walk this real fine line where it's like you know like that's kind of why i'm making this shit i am right you need Mm -hmm. to walk this fine line of something that's offensive and provocative but also doesn't get taken down right so yeah 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 within within the guidelines yeah and it wasn't wasn't like this like you know Back in 2019, I used to be able to post just like a show poster or like, you know, like a photo I had taken. And that was treated just as equally as anything else was. Right. Right. But n- now yeah. it's a fucking n- now apparently it's for arguing. So speaking of the death threats and all that shit, that could that could actually be beneficial to my career. Believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone out there, start giving Tommy death threats, but make sure they're comments, not messages. <laughs> yeah yeah i'll take i'll take it i'll take it in the comment section so that, uh, maybe all my friends can jump in but i don't mind the messages either i just kind of laugh about it i'm like the fool what the fuck are you gonna do well those won't help your yeah. algorithm though so yeah yeah so i don't know maybe the maybe the maybe the death threat messages help too i wouldn't i wouldn't really know <laughs> Oh boy. Awesome. Well, we have come up on time. So before you go, I wanted to ask you one more question. Actually, sure, Brady, yeah. before I do that, do you have any other questions you want to ask? So I was asked about the uh, the texture packs. Like, what, oh, are, yeah. what is that? Okay, well, um, because, uh, like, I have a couple busted fucking fax machines, right? So I was just kind of, like, ripping black pieces of paper through them to just get, like, a fax overlay. So... Uh, I was just, yeah, doing that just once again for something to do. Like, I have, like, I'm pretty busy, but a lot of my stuff is made pretty fast. So that's why I yeah. tend to do so much shit. But, um, yeah, that was just kind of something to, like, kind of just to make money, I guess, and sustain, sustain myself. So it's like, you know, it's like a digital product, and, like, you can just sell it to numerous people, right? so right, right. that's kind of cool i was like hanging out with one of my friends and i was like oh hell yeah it just made like 20 bucks it's like you know a couple people just bought this fucking thing right so yeah yeah it's like a i don't know just thought it was like a good idea as a freelance designer i know a lot of other people do stuff like that like they will sell like styles that look like letter set overlays yeah and this what this one designer i follow he was um he was going to sell some like distressed overlays. I think he had just taken really old shirts, like the cracked ink and like yeah. made some, made some like textures and stuff out of that. So yeah, it's just cool to have like, you know, digital, digital things. And that's kind of why I put my books up too, is like eBooks is because like people were bugging me for them. And it's quite a bit of money to like, you know, because it gets cheaper, like, you know, a hundred books will be cheaper per unit than 50. But if I go fucking get a get hundreds of books, then and don't sell them all, then that kind of fucking sucks. So it's right. like it's kind of pretty difficult for me to constantly be keeping this shit in stock, uh, you know, because this uh isn't really the biggest company or whatever the fuck you'd call it, right? Like Tommy Wilson Design isn't uh, isn't that rich, right? That's what I'm trying <laughs> to say. <laughs> There's not a lot of financial backing that goes into this project. It's kind of just me. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. I've got one more for you then, Tommy. Uh, sure. Yeah. It's a bit of a curveball. If uh, you were stuck on a desert island and yeah. you had a solar powered discman and only three CDs to listen to until you were hopeful of eventual rescue, Ooh. what albums would you want to have? Okay. Well, um, I'd take the Charles Bronson double disc CD. Does that count as one CD? Yeah. Sure. Yep. Okay. Awesome. I'll take that because that's got like a. They're like my number one 
favorite fucking band. Okay. And also, like, the graphic design, that's, like, 95% of the reason I wanted to be a designer. Awesome. So, yeah, I'll take that. Um, I'll take the Crossed Out discography. And uh, I'll take Student Ghetto Violence by Asshole Parade. Nice. Yeah, that one's also cool. a collection CD. So I'm trying. I'm trying to get the most uh, the most music for my three CDs here. There you go. Good choices. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna ask you something I haven't asked before. Actually, as a follow up to that one, if you sure. could bring with, uh, if you could have a book, which was like, a, I guess like a, you know an artist's book with a, yeah. a, coll- a collection of work. Whose book would you want to have to look at while you were waiting? Oh man, I thought I was gonna go the whole whole podcast without mentioning him, but uh, the Steelworks, the graphic details of John Yates, that's like my favorite fucking book. So I'll take that one for sure. Awesome. Yeah, he's been like wildly inspiring on my work for you know fucking pretty much since I found out about him. Nice, that's awesome. Yeah, he's definitely he's my favorite. So hell yeah, okay, yeah. I'm glad, I'll, I'm glad I asked. I'll take him. Yeah, those three CDs and that one book, and that's some fuck. I just hang out there. You don't even have to come get me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I want to give you one more chance. Uh, if people want to buy your work, hit you up for a commission, uh, any of that sort of stuff, what's the best places to do that? Oh, uh, well, unfortunately, my sack of shit Instagram page, Tommy Wilson Design. <laughs> that uh that has all the links to yeah i just sell shit out of my etsy shop and um yeah i mostly just work through you can email me if you want but like it's just faster to go through instagram instead of like you know so you can just send a picture and a dm instead of like you know fucking having to email shit and unfortunately i'm on it all fucking day because that's my job but uh yeah that's that's where to get a hold of me awesome and then yeah. uh Etsy is the best place to just purchase the stuff that you already have listed. Yeah, that's kind of the only place I really. I just have the one web store. So. Okay. Yeah. And then your band, uh, best place to check out the music. Um, we have a Bandcamp page. We're also on. We have uh, one of our seven inches on Spotify. Um, I guess if we have an Instagram page. So if you go follow the new Sweat page, like we'll be we'll be posting some new music, like hopefully pretty hopefully within the next couple months i guess like i said these records just take so long we kind of have to kind of have to wait on it until the record's out right so awesome well thank you yeah. so much for coming on the show really appreciate yeah. you taking the time thanks a lot great chatting thank with you, you. inviting me yeah definitely great awesome. talking and uh great ripping on mark zuckerberg i had a good time oh, yes. yeah <laughs> I, I could yeah if you want a part two i get there's lots more shit to talk there so <laughs> we'll just do a whole episode based on that oh fuck yeah yeah <laughs> then just we... mail it mail it to his fucking house <laughs> <laughs> you know what you should do to, to advertise your uh art make like a fake po- you know the image with the sweet baby rays on the shelf oh yeah photoshop your books onto that bookshelf as well oh perfect yeah and be like Zucker yeah. <laughs> yeah he's a he's a real big fan <laughs> that's why they haven't <laughs> deleted my account yet oh <laughs> yeah for <laughs> hey there's there's been a couple close calls i'll say that <laughs> awesome well thanks again and uh anyone listening at home tune in next time we have another guest for you <laughs>